Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. For those of you in America, I hope you've been enjoying a, a safe and wholesome and a, a sort of a warm, joyful uh, fellowship in terms of this Thanksgiving in a year that's that's not been a very easy year. Uh, I think in the history of the world, 2020 will be remembered as um, as a difficult year, a, a lonely year for some, a stressful year for most of us. And um, so, you know, it's these moments like this that that um, add a little bit of color and add a little bit of vibrancy and a little bit of life to to the year. Um, Christmas is also coming up, but you know the. There needs to be a balance between spending time with those people close to us, but also not, not, um, not mixing too much with other people. And th that is the, that's the thing that that's making this year so difficult, isn't it? In any event, in this episode, it's going to be a very short episode. I'm just going to bring up something that I think is, um, is, is easy to miss. I think a lot of people have missed it. And um, the implications of this are, are quite interesting. And, and that is to do with the, um, something that is missing from the phone data review. And um, I, can't, I can't really remember whether I knew or didn't know about that final text that Shanann sent. Um, when I saw it in the Netflix documentary, um, I wasn't sure whether that where that came from and it turned out that it does come from the discovery in fact it comes from page 1776 of the discovery but I think part of my uncertainty was well you know I just done a very very thorough analysis of the phone data review in 50 episodes dealing with each separate day so I kind of knew the phone data review back to front but that message that Shanann sent, you know, finally on the plane and about to take off, which she sent at eight minutes past 11 on um, the, the 12th, Sunday the 12th, eight minutes past 11 and one second uh, at night. Um, that does not appear in the phone data review. And you can go and have a look at the phone data review uh, and it's basically has um, a text from Shanann at quarter to 10 about her trying to call him to give him an update. And of course, at that, at that time, he was already um, on the call to Kessinger. In fact, he'd been on that call for about roughly 20 minutes or so, right? Um, 18 to 20 minutes or so. So... Um, so he missed that text and then um, Watts finally replied to Shanann at 21 minutes past 11 but um, that was I guess sort of to to the text at 2144 but but equally to the text that she sent at um, 1108 where you know where he was anticipating that that she was leaving the airport in, in Denver. In other words, that her plane had arrived on time and was leaving and she was leaving the airport to, to come home on schedule. Instead of that, the text was saying, well, I'm finally on the plane. I'm about to take off. So the time that he thought she was getting off the plane, you know, at, at 11.08 um, p.m., she was actually getting on the plane, and so it delayed everything. Uh, Shanann uh, was basically delayed by around about three hours um, because she arrived home um, about three hours after this text was sent. And uh, what, what sort of expected her, her home closer to around about um, around about midnight, I guess. Now, you might say, well, so what? So what? Um, this, this text is, um, 
was recovered, um, I think, in in a sort of Celebrite analysis, um, but it was basically recovered in the, I guess, the metadata of Shanann's phone. Why isn't it in the phone data review? And um, again, because it didn't go to trial, we can't say this for sure, but one possibility is that it isn't in the phone data review because the phone data reviewer couldn't find it in the same way that um, Watts's 111-minute phone call to Kessinger is not there either. Now, um, you know, the phone data review seems like this uh, sacred text. You know, everything that, that is important is there. But there are some things that are missing, and some of it is the most crucial information. For example, that 111-minute phone call with his mistress. That was important for Chris Watts to delete off his phone or, um, you know, make sure that it wasn't visible. Maybe he called her via the secret calculator app. But the same for Kessinger. And and that is in terms of their text to one another, sorry, their um, calls to one another. But what about this very important text from Shanann where it's not so much where she says she's finally on the plane, but where she she ends it off. You know, a very last message to her husband is love you with two kind of emojis with like a heart, uh, kissing kissing heart um, emojis, right? And so what is that? What is that symbolic of? What is that final text symbolic of? Well, it's symbolic of Shanann's feelings that she is still committed to him. She still wants to be married to him. She's under the impression he feels the same way. Bear in mind, he's, the last thing he said to her was, yes, he is prepared to go to marriage counseling. Yes, he is prepared to go with her away to Aspen to sort of work on their marriage, whatever. And of course, that wasn't true. But this final text is basically the Shanann's final sentiment to him. And, and it's quite damning, given what, what he did to her. She's telling him, I love you. She's telling him, I'm, I'm, you know, all is forgiven. I, I still care about you. And then he murders her. And so it's quite, imp it w had to be quite important for him from a criminal psychology perspective to delete that text because uh, of how it made him look. It made it look like she didn't leave him that, that night. I mean, if the last thing she said to him was, I love you, why would she just leave the first thing the next day? Right? So it would make it look very strange if that text was still found on her phone. And this then raises another question, which is, did Chris Watts have access to Shanann's phone? And I think there are two possibilities there. I think the one possibility is, yes, he did. Yes, he did actually know that six-digit password, which was... Um, Nico's due date and the other possibility is that he had access to the iCloud now I don't have an iPhone so I'm not quite sure how it works I don't know whether you also need the passcode to get into the iCloud people with iPhones will know that better than I do but all I'm suggesting is that it's possible that he had access to her handset when I say access to her handset I don't just mean physical but that he knew the PIN code or that he had access to the iCloud and that he could have deleted that message that way. If that's true, then he would also have had some kind of surveillance of what she was saying in her texts. And uh, that, that adds a very interesting dimension to whatever was going on. It's a bit like spying, you know, if, if he was able to do that. So what do you guys think? Do you think that he deleted this text or do you think that he removed it via the iCloud? What do you think? I'm not going to take it further than that. Uh, one thing that I can let you know is I'm going to be doing a live stream tomorrow at uh, 1400 Eastern Standard Time. So Sunday, 1400 EST. Uh, and I'll be taking your questions um, for around about an hour. Um, at at two o'clock Eastern Standard Time tomorrow, so if you're interested in that, uh, check it out. I don't do a lot of lives, um, but 
but I will be available for that one. So if you've got any questions, write them down. Uh, come to the live stream with, um, with any burning questions and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you for listening. Uh, again, have a happy, have a wonderful Thanksgiving with those close to you and I'll see you next time.